Hello there, everybody. This is Data Pioneer from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And today I thought I'd take a look at a new distribution um, based on Arch Linux I haven't looked at before. It's a 64-bit uh, distribution of Endeavor OS based on Arch. It originates from the Netherlands, and uh, it's uh, out on DistroWatch, and that's where I found it. So I thought I'd take a look at it, see what it's all about. It's based on uh, an XFCE desktop environment, so it should be very lightweight. And so if you want to come along with me and take a look at the distro, let's do it together. So let's have a look at Endeavor OS based on Arch from the Netherlands. Take a look at it. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I'm in my Oracle Virtual Machine Virtual Box Manager uh, version 6.0. And I'm going to set up the virtual machine for Endeavor OS inside this virtual machine manager. So let's go ahead and click on Machine New. And I'm just going to call this uh, Endeavor, uh, Endeavor OS Linux 2019. Um, and it's based on Arch Linux. So let's choose Arch Linux 64-bit. It is a 64-bit OS. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, 4 gigs of RAM, so that's 4096 megabytes. I am creating a virtual hard disk, so I hit the Create button here. Uh, I am going to give it 32 uh, gigabytes of disk space. BDI, dynamically allocated, and if you recall from previous videos, um, dynamically allocating the hard drive means you start out with a lower than 32 gigs here in this case, uh, and it builds up to a maximum of 32 gigs. If I gave it a fixed size, then it would remain at, it would start out at 32 and remain at 32. So let's go ahead and do a dynamically allocated. Let's create, and we've got it created. So here we are. So let's go ahead and click the settings button here and make some changes to the system. Uh, I'm going to not have to do anything here since we've set this up as Arch Linux 64-bit. For system processor, I'm going to leave it at one processor. I'll, I could give it two. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at one. I think it works fine with one, I believe. For um, motherboard here, I am going to untick the floppy, select the hard disk, and move it up in the boot order. So when I restart the system, it will boot up on the hard disk and not the optical media. All right. Uh, I am going to select display and give it the full 128 megabytes of video memory. Uh, I am going to select uh, VBox VGA and enable the 3D acceleration. For storage, I'm going to select that empty button here and select the uh, optical uh, disk file. And then I'm going to go out and I'm going to select the Endeavor OS Devel. 2019-0710 x86-64 ISO that I downloaded from the web. I'll put a link out on the video where to download this from. Uh, I got it from DistroWatch, uh, from the website for Endeavor. All right, so audio, I'm going to select the ICH AC97 for network. As usual, I'm going to select the one adapter here for this desktop OS and select bridged adapter. The reason for that is I want the Endeavor OS to be on the same network as my main PC that I'm running uh, Virtual Machine Manager in. USB, I am going to select USB 3.0 and click OK. And now I'm ready to launch this thing. So let's go ahead and launch the uh, OS Virtual Machine. And uh, as usual, again, uh, if you've seen my previous videos, I am going to change the view here and select full screen mode. I like the full screen mode. All right, so let's gonna, we're going to boot Endeavor OS. So hit the enter key, let it go ahead and boot up. We should come up to a live version, I believe, of Endeavor. And then we will do the install from there. Now, this is based on Arch Linux, as I said. Uh, it does have the XFCE desktop environment. I do run another uh, Arch Linux distro as a virtual machine, uh, and I did run it as bare metal for a while. Um, and that is Salient OS, and it's also 
based on Arch with the XFCE desktop manager as well, or desktop environment. Very nice uh, distro as well, by the way. Uh, salient OS. Uh, go up to SourceForge and download that. You'll like it. I wanted to give Endeavor OS a look, though, because um, I've seen a couple of reviews about it, and I uh, thought we'd do a full system setup and product review of it today. All right, so we have a connection established. And um, let's go ahead and uh, see what we've got here. We do have it coming up to 1920 by 1080 out of the box, which is very nice. Um, let's close that. All right, so let's see here. Um, for setting this up, so for system, install system is where we need to go. And this will launch the, I believe, the Calamaris installer. And here we go. Uh, this is the installer for Endeavor OS. And it's on the American English right now. And uh, that's nice. Uh, so it knows that I'm in the United States, and American English is my uh, keyboard and that kind of thing. So let's click the Next button. It says I'm in the New York region. I'm actually on the East Coast, so that's very good. Uh, America, New York is where I need to be. Click Next. Um, the generic 105 key PC international default English US is what I need, so I'm going to click Next. Um, this is a, a VM or a virtual machine, so I'm not going to do any manual partitioning. Uh, if I were doing a bare metal, I would do that. Uh, I'm going to erase the disk. I'm not going to have swap. This is a virtual machine. That's all I really need to do, and so let's click Next. Okay, so for name, my name is Dan Calloway. The PC I'm going to call Endeavor OS VM. Um, the, um, it's a login name, sorry. My username is Data Pioneer. And the name of the PC is Endeavor uh, OS VM. Uh, password I want to keep the account safe with is what I'm going to give it right now. And uh, confirm it. All right, I do not want to log in automatically even though it's a VM. And I do not want to use the same password for the administrator. I never do that. Uh, it's a security risk to do that. And so I'm going to go ahead and put in the password for root. All right, and let's click Next. So this is the structure of uh, the partitioning uh, before and after. And so after, we're going to have Endeavor OS on the 32-gigabyte uh, EXT4 file system. Uh, so let's go ahead and click Install. And uh, now it's telling me one final warning. You're not going to be able to make any changes if you click Install now. That's okay. That's what I want to do. We're going to click Install now and let it start the installation. Now, this is going to be a fairly quick install, and uh, but just depending on how long it takes, um, Endeavor shouldn't take very long. Arch Linux doesn't take that long to install from the installer. If it starts to look like it's going to take longer than a few minutes, I will go ahead and pause the video, and we'll come back at the end of it. Um, kind of looking forward here to Endeavor OS. Uh, this is a distro based out of the Netherlands. Uh, to me, it's new. Uh, I do love Arch Linux. Um, and if you start using Arch Linux, I think you'll agree with me that Arch Linux uh, has a lot of advantages. Um, it's a very clean, crisp XFCE desktop environment. Um, a lot you can do with it. The only thing is, if you're used to Debian-based systems or Ubuntu and that kind of thing uh, with the Aptitude Package Manager, uh, you will have a learning curve here because uh, Arch Linux uses Pac-Man and Pamac uh, as the package manager. And so um, you will have to learn how to use that. There are some differences, obviously, and uh, that's about the only learning curve you're going to have. Uh, the operating system, at least Salient OS anyway, 
uh, operates fairly well, and so I'm really happy with it. It's uh, with an XFCE desktop environment, it should be very light, unlike GNOME and some of the others, uh, KDE Plasma, uh, that are heavy, heavy-handed, and so uh, we should see very little RAM usage here out of the box in uh, Endeavor OS. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this is a preview here of what we can expect in Endeavor. Uh, it's a friendly, helping community that supports it, and um, and so uh, looking forward to it. We're at 21% now, and I'll give it a few more seconds. If it doesn't start moving along, I'll go ahead and pause the video, and uh, we'll come back. All right, looks like it's progressing forward. And so it's uh, filling up the file systems now, creating that ext4. And uh, so we'll see how it goes here. If you like my uh, channel, please go ahead and subscribe to it. Uh, this is the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And uh, when you subscribe to it, go ahead and hit that bell off to the right-hand side. So you'll be notified every time I, I upload a video. I do welcome you to the uh, the channel, and uh, I think you'll be happy with the number of videos I have up here. I have well over 200 videos now um, that I've created over the years, and um, so take a look at my channel, Linux Unix Tech Channel, everything Linux, everything Unix. I think you'll like it. All right, so we're still at 22 percent, and I may go ahead and pause. Well, no. Just went up to 23. I may go ahead and pause it anyway because uh, it may take longer than I anticipate. Um, we'll see. I'll give it a few more seconds, see if it goes ahead and jumps ahead. If not, I'll pause. I am installing this VM out on a, uh, a SATA drive. Uh, I believe it's a Western Digital uh, one terabyte black, and um, and so it is a little slower. I do have the main PC here that's running Virtual Machine Manager is running on a uh, SanDisk, um, not a uh, SATA drive. It is running on a uh, uh, a much faster drive, solid state. Okay, so it is progressing now quite rapidly, and so I think I may not have to pause the video after all. So we should be uh, wrapping it up here pretty soon. The kernel init RAMFS image is being created right now in the installer. And um, we're at 53% currently moving forward. And I believe at this point it should progress fairly, fairly rapidly. There we go. It's at 75% right now, installing packages. We don't have much longer to go, so I'm not going to pause the video after all. Um, this has been a fairly fairly rapid, you've seen this in real time, fairly rapid install of this Arch-based Linux system. 92% right now, we're installing the bootloader, so we should just be about ready to wrap this up. Okay, we're all done. All right, so let's go ahead and click that restart now button and click done and let's go ahead and restart this thing and come up to a um, operating system okay so we are booting up now hit the enter key on the keyboard and um, we're getting the version 242.32-3 arch and we're getting a notification that we have clean files that's good this is a new system a new virtual machine so it should be clean and um, all right, so we're at the login screen, and we're at 1920 by 1080. Wonderful. I do not have to install virtual machine or virtual box uh, Linux editions or anything like that. So let me go ahead and log in. Hit that login button, and let's log into the system. We have 10 unread news items here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click that off. And uh, so this is the desktop. Um, these things that you see here, th this is saying that I have 210 updates. 
I'm not going to update it right now, uh, especially on screen, because that will take a while. But I probably will update it and then come back and, um, and show you what we have. But let's look around what we have out of the box. We have the Endeavor OS uh, icon here. We've got the Firefox web browser. We've got the Thunar file manager. And then we have the KFCE terminal on the left-hand side. We do have a whisker menu, I believe it is, uh, set up here. And we've got a lot to look at here. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and update the system and then come back to take a look at the whisker menu. We do have the audio uh, volume control, which means we do have audio. And we'll prove that we have audio here uh, when I update the system. Uh, we have US English keyboard. We have the uh, Kalu, uh, which is a, uh, a utility for updating the system if you want to do that through a GUI. Um, we have the Ethernet connection here for wired. We have a calendar. This is the 2nd of September. And then my name here. So if you click that, we can either lock the screen, suspend, hibernate, shut down, restart, or log out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video, update the system, and then come back and show you what it looks like in an updated fashion. And then we'll go through the Whisker menu and look at some of the things that we have as well. Okay, uh, we're back. And um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've uh, upgraded the system using uh, Pac-Man, uh, the command that I'll show you when I get in here in the terminal, um, to update those 210 updates that were uh, available. And I've made some other minor changes to the desktop and some other things you'll see. We're at the login screen right now. I've restarted. So let me go ahead and log in. Let me uh, focus it first. All right. Log in to the new desktop now. I've got a new wallpaper set up on uh, Endeavor OS. Looking quite nice. All right, here we are. And we're in Endeavor OS. I've got a different theme set up. Let me go ahead and close these things down. And... Um, you can see that I, I have made some, some changes. I do have a shortcut out here um, to my secure email system. Um, and so now, uh, even the Whisker menu has changed a little bit. I have favorites set up as well. So let's take a look at what we have, and then I'll, I'll get into the terminal. Um, so under Settings, we have the Settings Manager, Accessibility, Advanced Network Configuration, Appearance, which is what I used to make my major changes here. I've changed it to the arc darker appearance, okay, uh, which is, you know, the dark panel and some other things. All right, so let me close that. Um, and so color profiles, desktop display. As I told you, we have the 1920 by 1080 display, 60 hertz, uh, no rotation, no reflection. Uh, looking good. I did not have to install um, VirtualBox guest editions or Linux editions. This was 1920 by 1080 out of the box, so I'm really happy with that. And I think that has to do a lot with with changing. If you recall, I changed the settings on the display initially um, to uh, incorporate the VGA uh, a display as opposed to the VMS display. All right, so let's get back in here, and under Settings, we have File Manager, which is the Thunar File Manager keyboard, uh, Light DM GTK uh, greeter settings, the MIME type editor here, the mouse and touchpad notifications, the OREDGE pre uh, preferences setting for the calendar and things like that. We have a customize the panel utility, Power Manager, preferred applications, um, and QT5 settings, sessions and startup, settings editor, window manager, workspaces, which I have set up uh, on the panel already, the XFCE terminal, etc. Now, if you don't want to go through the whisker manager, or menu rather, for this, you can come down here. There is a button for all settings, and that opens up the settings panel for you, so you can get into what I just described uh, in the whisker menu, okay? All right, so let's close that. I did mention that I have a um, 
workspace set up. I have six workspaces set up here, and I have two rows. So I have three across the top, three across the bottom. Uh, I've got a screenshot utility that I put out on the desktop if I want to capture a screenshot of the desktop. Uh, and the same as the rest as I've shown you before. Okay. Um, under accessories, we have the application finder, archive manager, bulk rename, clipman, calculator, Kalu, which is keeping the Arch Linux up to date. Um, and then some of these are repetitive here because they come under more than one category. Software token, uh, task manager, just like in Windows, you have the task manager in Linux, and Arch has a task manager. I like the fact that it does have that. We've got the Thunar file manager, and then we got something called XBurn. We want to burn CDs or DVDs, which I rarely ever do anymore. If I install operating systems, uh, bare metal, I usually use the USB creator. For development, we've got CMake and GHEX. For graphics, we have the Ristretto image viewer. I really like the Ristretto. Let me click on that and open that up. And show you because I do have uh, an image that I can open. Uh, so I, uh, under in the uh, recent here, I've got uh, the Endeavor Linux OS desktop that I set up earlier. Let's go ahead and open that up and show you. Uh, let's go to full screen. This is the Ristretto image viewer. I really like that uh, quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's actually advantageous over some of the others I've seen. Uh, and uh, and so you can you know zoom in, you can zoom out, you can zoom to 100%. Uh, you can come up here to the file and uh, check the properties of the of the file itself. You can edit here preferences for the Ristretto viewer. Uh, you can do a bunch of things here under the view, uh, and then you can um, do some other things under Go, and then about the Ristretto is version 0 .0. 0.10.0. Let's close that. Let's go ahead and close Ristretto Viewer, get back to the desktop, and then let's get back into uh, here. And so now with the Whisker menu, we've got the Internet portion, which is the Vahi uh, SSH server browser and uh, VNC server browser. We've got eLinks, which is interesting. eLinks is like the uh, links browser. Um, let me pull that down and uh, actually let me bring it up, and click it here and get to a full screen. What this is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, it's kind of like the links browser, which is a text-based only web browser for going out on the web. Let me go ahead and put in a URL. I'll go ahead and put in the URL of my personal website, which is HTTPS um, linuxveritas.com. All right, so HTTPS linuxveritas.com. Click OK. And that's going to be taking us out to the text-based only version of my website. All right. And so it doesn't look like much here. Uh, but here's an article. I'll go ahead and bring that up, and let's hit Enter. And this should bring up my full article. Here it is. It does. It's on In Linux Find Truth uh, website. Uh, and there's the link, and here's the article. Triple Fence Defense Strategy for Hardening an SSH Server. So if you want to view this particular um, website in text base only, no graphics at all, you can do that. That means it eliminates all of the ads. It eliminates all of the graphics that loads because there are a lot of graphics here in this article. Uh, but if you click that, it takes you to a previous article that I had on how to set up your own domain website on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so I, I like this browser. I like the capability that it gives you. You can obviously get to this without using this particular um, terminal-based, um, link-based browser. Uh, but uh, you can use the links browser if you want. But this is essentially the same thing. All right. And so that is uh, what I wanted to show you here under Internet. Uh, and that is the eLinks browser. All right. So Firefox, let's go into Firefox and see what version we have. Um, and so when it loads, uh, we'll pull that up. 
And so let's go to the pancake and come down to the help and about Firefox. You can see that we're running version 68.0.264 bit Firefox Quantum, which is the latest version. Okay. And so let's, uh, let's go up to YouTube while we're in the browser. And we'll show that we have uh, audio here. Let me go over to my channel and uh, click on that. And I'll pick up a video that we have here. Uh, this is me, uh, response to distro, DistroTube on RMS and Linus Stifling Linux. I'm going to open that up. And um, I have to say that I really wasn't sure where DistroTube was coming from. Um, and my respect for the man has dropped a bit. Uh, as it was. Okay, so we do have audio, as you can tell there. And um, let me go ahead and close the browser. Let's get back into the internet, and I've installed a couple of applications uh, since I did the initial Calamaris install here of, of Endeavor OS. Um, I installed the GFTP um, utility, which is the GNOME file transfer protocol utility. And what I'm going to do here is show you that I can access my personal cloud at 192.168. Dot one, dot one fifty seven. It's on the LAN, and because I set up the bridged adapter here, I can touch anything out on my LAN. The username is Dan Calloway, and if I click this button here, it brings up the login screen uh, for logging in. So let me go ahead and log in. Click Connect, and it should connect me to my personal cloud. This is a five terabyte personal cloud, and I'm going to go out on the public side. You can see that I have uh, pictures, shared pictures, shared music, shared videos. So let me click the uh, shared pictures. Uh, let's go over here to the local side and click pictures. I have the Makalu backgrounds already downloaded here, and I'll show you that later. Uh, but I have something here called uh, Bridges. And so this is a directory of Bridges wallpapers uh, that I have up on my personal cloud. So if I select it here on the remote side and then click the left arrow, that's going to download that folder or the directory onto the local system in Endeavor OS on the VM. And when it completes, I'll close this uh, GFTP interface and we'll go out and take a look at it. All right, so there it is. Let me go ahead and close this. All right, let's go ahead and open up the uh, file manager, which is the Thunar file manager, and let's double click the pictures. And there it is, there's Bridges. All right, so there's all of the files I just downloaded from my personal cloud uh, in Endeavor OS. And I love this operating system, uh, Arch, Linux oper Arch Linux operating system uh, from the Netherlands, uh, as I said earlier. Uh, it's really uh, robust, it's really quick, it's very fast. Um, very crisp, as a matter of fact, uh, the way and the way it looks, and then very swift in the way it operates. Very responsive. I, I like it a lot. Okay, so uh, if I take a, one of the images and if I right click and open with the Ristretto Image Viewer, there's what we get. So very nice. This Ristretto uh, Image Viewer. I really like it. All right, so let's close that. Let's go ahead and close the Thunar File Manager. Let's get back into the internet here. Uh, something else I installed was the hex chat, uh, internet relay chat, if you're into that. The transmission, um, let's get back up to internet here. Uh, transmission, um, BitTorrent client, ZenMap, uh, and then ZenMap map as root. I have not used ZenMap. Multimedia, you've got the Parole Media Player, you've got Pulse Audio Volume Control. You've got a couple of QT utilities here. Uh, I also installed a simple screen recorder for screen recording on the desktop here in Endeavor. You've got a volume icon, and you've got XF Burn. Under Office, uh, you've got the dictionary. You've got the Orage Calendar and Orage Global Time. Um, I do not have any... Uh, uh, Office Suites installed at the moment, but I will install one of my own. I do not care for Libra Office, and so I will probably be installing uh, WPS. Under System, 
I showed you that earlier. Uh, one of the things I didn't show you was HTOP. So let's go ahead and launch HTOP and open that up. And we're running at 432 megs right now out of 4 gigs. Not bad at all. Let me bump that up to full screen. So that's not bad at all. That means it's a very lightweight XFCE desktop environment. Uh, we've got 66 tasks, 100 threads, one task running. Our load averages right now are 0 0.08, 0 0.22, and 0.16, extremely well uh, for this system. Uh, we have no swap right now because I did not create a swap uh, for this system. And we have been active for 15 minutes and 14 seconds here in, um, in this Endeavor OS Linux, Arch-based Linux system. Very nice system. Um, I've got the transparent background going here on the uh, XFCE terminal. Let's go ahead and close this. And in order to open the terminal, all you need to do is right click on the terminal or on the desktop and select Open Terminal here. And I've configured this terminal here for this particular default uh, size. And let me just bump it up a little bit and show you that uh, this is what it looks like. I like it because I can see through to the desktop if I've got things running out on the desktop. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and issue a uname command. So let's do a uname R and see what version or of the, of the uh, kernel we're running. We're running 5.2.11-arch1-1-arch. So let me go ahead and uh, do a uname dash A and show you that we are running Linux Endeavor OS VM as a VM. Uh, and we are at uh, 080936 uh, Universal Coordinated Time on the, uh, August the 29th, Thursday, uh, 2019. Okay, and so let's go ahead and um, clear the screen here. And um, in this particular uh, terminal, I'm going to go ahead and issue a sudo command and do a pacman uh, and dash capital S for search. And let's search for FileZilla and see if FileZilla is available in the uh, Arch repositories. Go ahead and put in the password. And uh, sure enough, there's uh, libfilezilla. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and install it. And we should have FileZilla out on the uh, menu uh, when we finish this. I'm going to go ahead and exit here. And so let's see if we have FileZilla here. It should be under Internet. And there it is. There's FileZilla. I'm going to right-click and add it to Favorites. And then Close. And then let's get back in. So under Favorites, I should see FileZilla, and there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. FileZilla is another um, file transfer protocol uh, application. Uh, let's open it to full screen. It's a little bit different from the GNU file transfer protocol, but I'm going to go ahead and put in 192.168.1.157. If you recall, that was the IP address of my personal cloud. The username here is Dan Calloway. Uh, I will go ahead and load the password in. All right, I'm going to click Quick Connect, and I should get an initial warning. Uh, well, a banner to save passwords, and I'm going to say OK. And then I get a warning that says that it does not support FTP. That's all right. Always connect insecurely. Click OK, and see, I, now I'm back in my personal cloud. Um, and I do have the public side here. A little bit different interface look and feel here with FileZilla. Uh, I do prefer the GNOME FTP client over FileZilla, but uh, you get the point. Uh, we do have the same interface. It's uh, fairly uh, similar and uh, works the same, except if you want to move things from here on the remote side to the, per to the uh, local side, you have to drag and drop them in. Uh, there are no arrows here to uh, control that operation. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. Okay, so continue on. And uh, under uh, system, I think we were finished, actually. Um, you can lock the screen here. You can log out here if you like. Um, 
And um, I think I showed you everything that was over here. So pretty much we've looked at uh, Endeavor OS. I did create a shortcut out here on the desktop. Um, and to do that, you just right-click Create URL Link. If you want to create a launcher, you can do that. Um, and so that's how I created it. And so let me double-click on it. And that should open up the Firefox web browser and take me directly to my ProtonMail. And there it is. Um, and this is my secure email based in Switzerland. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the browser. All right, so this has been a quick review of Endeavor OS, Arch-based Linux distribution. Uh, it's based in the Netherlands. Its uh, origin is in the Netherlands. Uh, and I like it a lot. It's got a lot of promise, a lot of uh, possibilities here. Uh, and so check out Endeavor OS. And uh, Okay, well, this has been a, a quick review of Endeavor OS Linux, Arch-based Linux 64-bit out of the Netherlands. And uh, where I found it, I'll put a link uh, to this out on the desktop, but it's uh, distrowatch.com. Just go into your uh, distribution list here, pull up Endeavor OS, come down, and you can see all about it here. Its origin is the Netherlands. It is an XFCE desktop, as I mentioned earlier in the video. And if you come down to the home page and click on it here, this is HTTPS EndeavorOS.com. Let's click on that and go out to it. And here you are. And then there's a link here for download. Uh, so you can click on that and you can download Endeavor OS for yourself. Give it a try out. Uh, go to the 2019, I believe the 0817 x86. That's an older version, I believe. So let's see if we... Um, uh, August release is here. So let's click on that. And yeah, so this is the later version here of the distro. So just click on the link there. And that should, uh, I'll put a link, a copy of it out on the, uh, below the video so you have it, uh, so you won't be able to miss it. But this is Endeavor OS, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like my video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you get updated every time, uh, you get alerted, rather, every time I update a video or upload a video to YouTube. So uh, hope, hope you enjoyed this, and have a nice day. Take care. See you around. Bye-bye.